Okay. So let's see what happens. All right. So to gra graph the sine function, the sine function is what we call all these functions, trig functions, or periodic functions. In other words, they keep repeating themselves. Okay. So if you have your unit circle, or if you don't, you can kind of just watch along. Um, let's graph um, y equals sine theta, or sine x, you can call it, it doesn't really matter. That easy. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this interval up from 0 to 2 pi, because that's our normal interval function. From 0 to 2 pi is when 2 pi is when the, uh, it's called the period of the function, normal period of the function. And then if we take 2 pi and we take half of this number, we add these together. 0 plus 2 pi divided by 2, or taking half of it, we get pi. So we're going to divide this up into four intervals. There's two. Now we're going to split this into a, a, up again. So this will be 0 plus pi times 1 half. So that'd be pi over 2. And we're going to divide this up. So 2 pi plus pi. That's 3 pi times a half would be 3 pi over 2. So this is our normal standard way of dividing it up. We're going to run into some that aren't normal. You know, they're going to be all over the place. Let me check off a few people here. I got to get a better paper. All right, so how are we going to do this? Okay, well, let's look at this. Let's call this distance right up here one and this distance right here negative one. Looking at my chart, remember the first the first number is the cosine and the next one is the sine. So the sine of zero is zero. The sine of pi over two is one. So we have this sine of pi over two is one. So we're going to put a dot there. The sine of pi, remember it's this back number, zero again. The sine of three pi, and then maybe you remember as these after a while, three pi over two is right down here, negative one. And finally, the sine of two pi is zero again. So this is our one period. So in between here, we have these other values, 30 degrees and 45. And, and we could plot all those points, but it would take, you know, it takes a long time to do all that. So we're going to kind of estimate them. And so this curve kind of comes up and curves around. It's not just a straight line. And then it curves down, goes down to the negative one. And then it curves back. And that's called one period of the function from 0 to 2 pi. That would be the graph. Now, this actually keeps on going here. And it keeps on going here. So it, could, it doesn't have to stop just right at these points. It it's just keeps repeating. This number, if there is no number, and there was no number in front of here, but the number was a 1. That's the amplitude. That tells us how high this goes. And if there is none, then we assume it's a 1. We take the absolute value of that number. Say you have y equals negative 2x, 2 sine x. We would take the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. And so the amplitude, AMP, is, is 2 units. So that gives you the amplitude of the function. OK, so the sine looks like that. Now let's look at the cosine. 
Cosine is going to be at the same points, pi over 2, pi, oops, here, can't see it, out. 3 pi over 2, and uh, 2 pi. Um, these are our key points. We, we, you notice we're using radian measure instead of, you could put, you know, uh, 90, 180, 270, 360, but we usually use radian measures when we're doing all right. Okay, so does that make any sense to you? So if we look at our chart, we find out that the cosine of zero is one. Pi over two, the cosine of pi over two is zero. The cosine of pi is negative one. Let's make this one, make this negative one. The cosine of three pi over two is zero again. And the cosine of two pi is, is one. So let's see what's happening here. We're going to go this way, going to go down. My phone's ringing, but I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to go up, and we're going to curve. Again, they're not just straight lines, they're curves. They're persistent. OK, so do you follow that? This is, and of course, it would keep on going this way and this way. Let me take this off now. Not to worry about it. Okay. So this would be the sine function and this is the cosine function. So you want to make sure you have those so that you understand what the sine and the cosine look like. They have a little drawing in your book. Page 135, here's your sine function. Notice how it just keeps repeating. This way and it would keep repeating this way. So it can go in a negative direction, it can go in a positive direction. And here is your cosine function. If you rotate this over a little bit, it becomes a sine function. Okay. And we talked a little bit about amplitude. So let's try another one here. Let's try example one on page 137. They grant it, want us to graph y equals. Uh, what is the problem? 2 sine x. Well, this part, this is the period of the function. And the period hasn't changed. It's, it's the same. The only thing that's changed is the amplitude. So the amplitude has got a little bit higher. So what we're going to do is draw our normal graph. But we're going to go up two units down two units. We're going to try to space these out evenly in the four equal parts, two pi, pi, split that in half, pi over two, and finally, uh, three pi over two. Okay, now we're going to try to grab the sine function. Remember, sine starts right at the origin, you might think of it. And then it goes up, but instead of going up one, it's going to go up two units. Then it comes back down to zero again. Then it goes to a negative two. And then it comes back at zero. So at zero pi and two pi, it's at zero. See? Zero pi, two pi, it's at zero. At pi over two, it's at one. Three pi over two, it's at negative one. So my graph is kind of coming up much higher than before, but it's still looking the same. And you might extend it just a little bit to kind of show that it doesn't just end right there. Okay. Okay. So so let's take a look at um, another problem here. This is where the fun begins. B 
because sometimes we don't always have a nice period of X or theta. We have weird uh, things. So let's look at one here. On page 138, we find the, um, the period of the function. The period of the function is, um, how can I say this? It's 2 pi divided by b. And b is going to be a number that's going to be in front of this x term. So you might have 2 sine 3x or 2 sine 4x. We just put a bx right now. So you, to find that period, you're going to take 2 pi. Whoops, you can't see it. You're going to take 2 pi and divide it by b. Let's just use a simple one, sine bx, y equals, OK? To find that period, we're going to do this. And so if we're going to put this, this period, because sometimes we're going to have to move this. Right now, we just say it's in between bx is between these two values, 0 and 2x. Somewhere your period is going to be between those. So we're going to try one here. Uh, we're going to try a simple one, y equals 2x. y equals the sine of 2x. OK. So what happens here is we're going to have to take 2 pi. And we're going to divide it by the period. The period is this, b is this number right here in front of x. And we're going to divide it by b. So this is pi. So let me show you what the normal one would be. The sine of x is, let's do this. We usually have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, right? And the values at this point would be 0, 1, negative 1, I mean 0, excuse me, negative 1, and 0. These are the values that you normally have for x when you go to plot. You know, or for y, probably same. Now, what we have is we have a problem here that's y equals sine 2x. So the period right here is pi. And this number right here is zero. And so now what we want to do is take half of this. We want to add these numbers together and multiply them by one half. So zero plus pi is pi times a half is pi over two. So this middle number becomes pi over two. This number right here, we're going to add together these two and multiply by half. So pi over 2 plus 0, that's pretty easy, it's pi over 2. But we're going to multiply it by 1 half, so that becomes pi over 4. So you're going to get very good at fractions. Now you're going to add these two together. That's where it gets a little harder. How are you going to add pi over 2 and pi? Pi over 2, so let's write pi as 2 pi over 2. See, the 2s will cancel and you get pi. That way they have the same denominator. So that adds up to 3 pi over 2. Then we're going to multiply that by a half. So that becomes 3 pi over 4. Now, you could kind of look at this and make sure that it makes sense. This is, look at your numerators. This is 0. This is 1, 1 pi. If this was a 4, 1 half and 2 fourths is the same. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 fourths. 4 fourths pi is pi. 3 fourths pi, 2 pi over 4, 1 half. OK, confusing enough. Huh? So now we're going to go ahead and try to graph this. So our interval now is not going to be 0 and 2 pi. It's going to be pi. 
This is going to be pi over 2. This is going to be 3 pi over 4. And this is going to be pi over 2. Like that. And then there'd be the same values. Here's 1. Here's negative 1. It starts out at 0, goes up to 1, down, down, up. After a while, you kind of get the pattern. It looks like that. But if I was to graph it on this one right here, your graph would look like this. If I could even do it right. It would be just like that. Go here, down, up, here, down. Up. So it goes through two cycles in the amount of time that it normally goes through one cycle. This graph you got is going twice as fast. It's going through two cycles in that amount of time. It normally should have went through just one cycle, but now you have two X, so it's going to go much faster. It's going to go through this twice as fast. Now, would you? What you want to do is just convert over the point. This Miss D, but Miss, like, it's a long. Uh, do you want her whole last name? Say again, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, <laughs> any of her emails, any of the senior emails has her phone. Huh? And that's it, these better? My enunciation is poor? Is that what you're saying? I can understand my voice. She was is, just confused. It's okay, Mr. Mitchell. She no, my coming. voice is bad. I, I realize. So I'm going to do another one for you. That makes it even worse. Okay. What does your cosine look like? Can you remember your cosine? Let's just use a standard one. So you want to put four, four lines there. This is going to be your two pi. This is going to be your zero point. This is going to be pi. This is going to be pi over two. This is going to be three pi over two. That's normal, huh? Now, well, we're going to do one that's not normal, which is y equals, oh, let me do the graph, huh? Okay. The cosine starts at one. Instead of starting at zero, it starts at one, goes down goes down, then it starts to come up and come up. Kind of looks like a, a vase or a, a drinking glass, like a martini glass, something like that. You can think of it as a, a glass. It kind of looks like that. It's got that shape. So the cosine has a totally different shape than the sine. Here's your sine. You can see your cosine is quite different, huh? All right, so what we're gonna to try to do is graph one that's horrible. We're gonna to try to graph cosine of two thirds X. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Okay. First of all, this is the period, this is B. We're gonna take two pi, two, we always start with two pi, and we're gonna divide it by two thirds. So that's gonna give us two pi um, times what? Three over two, gotta flip it. So that's gonna give us 3 pi. So our cycle isn't going to go from 0 to 2 pi. It's going to go from 0 to 3 pi. So that makes it kind of confusing, huh? So we're going to go from 0 to 3 pi. So let me draw a little sketch here. Maybe on a separate sheet of paper might be better.
our amplitude is one, so we don't have to worry about that so much. One, negative one, this is our zero point. It gets worse, don't, don't worry about it, it will get worse because uh, we have to phase shift and we have to change altitudes and center lines and everything. So it, it's gonna become more difficult. So just put three pi down. Now, split three pi in half, zero plus three pi, just put it in half so that'd be three pi over two. Okay, so we're dividing this up into four equal areas. Here's one way I do it, okay? Let's take this, because this, this sounds confusing, the way I'm maybe showing you. Here's how I sometimes do it. I want to split this up into four equal parts, right? So I'm going to take that three, I'll show you a trick I use. I'm going to take this three that's in front of three pi, and multiply by four and that gives me 12. This actually is 12 pi over four. Half of that, if I take this in half, half of 12 is six. This gives me six pi over four. Half of six is three. This gives me three pi over four. Three, six, nine, 12, this would be nine pi over four. Then what I do, you know, I might do this just off so it doesn't show on the graph. I'll reduce them if I can. Three pi over four won't reduce. So I leave this three pi over four. Six pi over four reduces to three halves. Nine pi over four won't reduce. And finally 12 pi over four reduces to three pi. Does that make any sense? So if I multiply this number by four, I can get all my numerators and I put all my numerators over four and then I can reduce it down. That's how I do it. Uh, it's a little different from the book, but it's the easiest way for me to do it because there's a lot of switching on these fractions and you can go crazy on them. Now, remember this is a cosine two-thirds x. So what the cosine is going to do, it's going to start at one, go down, go down, come up, come up. And it's going to be kind of a curvy thing like that. And then you got it drawn. And there's your cosine of two-thirds x. But you can see, you can't really plot both of these on the same grid. If you try to do that, you'll drive yourself crazy because three pi over two is going to be here and you're going to, it, it, it doesn't work very well to try to put this graph and this graph on the same grid. Uh, you're going a little nuts at you. What you want to do is just translate these points right here that relate to this function. Let's try another one. Let's try, I just make up one. Okay, let's say we have y equals sine three-fourths x. Terrible problem. Okay, step one. Take, take two pi and divide it by the three-fourths. That's two pi times four-thirds. Flip that over, you get eight pi over three. Okay, now you wanna figure out your div divisions. Okay, see that one didn't come out a very nice problem, did it, after we changed it. So your divisions are zero to eight pi over three. But what you're gonna do is down here, a little bit lower, is multiply this eight by a four, because we want four divisions. So four times eight is 32. You're gonna use 32 pi, and we're gonna multiply the bottom number by four, 12. Okay, and this becomes zero. Now take half of that. So 
half of that would be 16 over 12 or 32 over 24, but 16 over 12 were caught. You're going to reduce this later. 16 pi over 12. Okay, now take half of that. Half of 16 is what? 8. Well, actually, all you had to do was take half of the top number out. 8 pi over 12. So you got 0, 8, 16. What do you think this should be? 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 8 is 24 pi over 12. These would be your divisions then. Now you want to reduce them down. So you can divide this one by 4, and you get 2 pi over 3. Want to reduce this one by probably 4, huh? So that'd be 4 over uh, 3. That'd be 4 pi over 3. Want to divide this one by 4. That'd be 8. And 4 goes into 24, 6. <laughs> Well, if I want to divide this by 6 to begin with, or by 12, huh? 12 into 24 is 2, 2 pi, and then 8 pi over 3. See, and then you have your divisions. 8 over 12. Because this was supposed to be 8 pi over 3, right? So I multiply by 4 and 4 a.m. Yeah. 8, 16, 24, 32, all over 12. And then I reduced them all down. And sometimes you might get a whole number. And then, of course, this is sine. So you remember sine goes, starts at 0, goes up to 1, down, down, up, kind of like a snake. Or kind of like an S in a way, huh? There you have your divisions. So that's how I kind of do it because it's it is confusing uh, to to divide them up. Okay. So let's try one more here. This one's in the book, so we can see if we're getting it right. We may have to wait to section four point two. Uh, tomorrow because these are kind of tricky. Okay. What's a, what's our what's our um, uh, b? B is three. So this is going to be two pi over b, which is two pi divided by three. Okay. So our graph is going to go from, and just space these out evenly. Half of that, well, and also this is going to, we're going to do our amplitude. We take the absolute value. So this would be two units up and two units down. Okay. So let's see. We're going to multiply by 4 if you want to do it that way. 4 times 2 is 8. Just think 8 pi over 4 times 3 is 12. Okay. Half of, half of 8 is 4. So this is going to be, I'm going to put it down here, 4 pi over 12. Okay. Half of 4 is 2. This will be 2 pi over 12. 0, 2, 4, 6. 6 pi over 12. This was 8 pi over 12. See? 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Now all I've got to do is reduce those. Pi over 6 reduces pi over 3. Reduce this pi over 2. And finally 2 pi over 3. See, they don't even look like they match up, do they? But they do here. And that's what's important. Get that out of here. So this matches up here. Does that make any sense at all? I know you're work, going to be working. It's going to get worse. The fractions get worse. Now, this is sine, zero. Instead of going up to one, it goes up to two, down to zero, down to negative two, up, 
energy. And there's our graph. Pretty cool, huh? And you've got a graph with the correct markings. Let's double check the book. They do it a little differently, but I think this, this makes more sense. See, change all these to 12s. And then, and then you just, you can see the numerators. There's always a pattern, two, four, six, eight. And that reduced the fractions. So I hope that helps. What else do we have here? Determining the equation for a graph. Horrible. Okay. Here's a number example five. Y equals, how long do you get to stay here? Get by 12, okay. Y equals negative three cosine pi X. Okay, this is the number we're dividing by, kind of a strange problem, huh? <clears throat> so the period, 2 pi, this is b, divided by b equals 2. So that's the period of your function, 2. Draw the line. This is a negative 3, so the absolute value is 3. You can just make them smaller. Here's negative 3. Here's positive 3. Oh, I think I forgot to show you something, though. I made a little mistake and I, I correct it. I correct it in a second. I did make a mistake. Okay, I haven't done this for a while. So, four divisions. Okay, this has got to be two. This has got to be one. This is going to be a half. So, they don't always have to have pi in them. See, and that's, I remember when I took trig, I thought, oh, they always got to have the pi or some degree. They can have numbers. One half, uh, two halves, three halves. See, I'm going to try to put the pi in there. Three halves and then four halves. Four halves is two. One half, two halves, two twos, three twos, four twos. Okay. Now, I was showing you something wrong. Okay. I made a mistake on the last problem, but I corrected and I showed it to you. Normally, this is how they go, right? Zero, up, down, up, down, and then up again. But if this number is negative, it means it's upside down. I forgot about that. So if this number in front of it, it's going to go to an amplitude of three. But if the number is negative, your graph would be upside down. So this was a cosine on top of that, and I'm doing the sine. Okay, so normally it would be, let me do this again. Let me do it again. Different color. Okay, normally it would be here, 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 and here. But it's going to be upside down. So instead of starting at one, we've got to start at negative one. Negative three, in other words. It is going to hit zero, but at this point it's going to be way over here. Then it's going to come down. And then instead of being up here, it's down here. It's just the reverse. So it's the reverse, it's upside down. So it's starting here, I don't know, maybe not very good at drawing this upside down. Kind of curves this way in and then down and then in like that. Kind of like a tulip upside down. I think I made the same mistake on we didn't do it here, but if this graph, say this graph had to be negative one instead, then it would be just the reverse. This this point would still be at zero, but this point would be down, up, up, down, down. <laughs> okay, it would look like this. Glasses. Uh, anyhow, forget that. So I forgot to show you that. 
So we can do all kinds of stuff and have lots of fun. I think, um, I think I'm just gonna cover this section because the next section, you need to practice on these. Let's take a look at some of these. First of all, looking at these graphs right here, you can recognize this is cosine, this is sine. Cosine, this is upside down, cosine, sine, probably upside down. Um, sine, sine, cosine, cosine. Okay, matching them up, this is a normal cycle. So this is gonna be uh, just sine x. Huh? Um, this is a normal cosine. Where's a normal cosine? Zero to two pi. Here's a normal cosine. Now what's happening here? This is going zero to pi. That means it's going twice as fast. It's going through the whole th cycle. This is a sine function and it's twice as fast. So this would probably be y equals sine two x because you could go two of those in the amount of time so this is going to be, did I call it a sign? This, this is, a, this was, a, where's my cosine? This should be two. This was a cosine. This is your sine, but it's twice as fast. This is y equals, not two sine x, but sine two x. The two, this is indicating the cycle, the period in here. This is just the amplitude. So you might want to try those and see if it could actually match up uh, what's going on. It might be kind of hard to do, or you might have to take one of these and actually draw it or something, and then see if it relates. That would be good practice. And then these functions, of course, working with this is what you really want to work on, these problems right in here. So that's, uh, you got your work cut out on this section. It's a little bit harder section to do. Then next time, what we're going to do, if it wasn't hard enough, we're going to translate these graphs. We're going to even move them over. So it's probably hard enough to get these numbers. Now we're going to move them uh, one way or the other. We're going to move them back or not. These are what we call translations of the, the functions. So we're going to work on that. And uh, we'll probably do some of this tomorrow, try to do some of those. It's going to be a little harder problems. Okay, so I hope I didn't totally confuse you. I, you know, you might want to try this method a little bit and see if it works for you. Have a good lunch. Do you have any questions? Uh, somebody signed in here with an iPhone and I don't know who they are. I need your name. Maddie, I know who you are. That's Caitlin Attaway. Caitlin. Caitlin, you're pretty sneaky. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin. Oh, yes, if, sir. if you have a question, you know, you want to ask or anything, that's fine. You can interrupt me. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. So are you posting the video on Canvas as well? Or Yeah, I'm going to post this one on Canvas, yes. Oh, all right. All right, yeah, it'll be posted. It, it may take me a little time to put it up there, but it'll be posted by today. Okay, we'll see you guys then.